Hey guys, can you hear me? Can anybody in the chat verify that we're getting audio? Okay, nobody's here yet. <laughs> okay, can you guys hear me? Is anybody here? <laughs> What's going on, guys? Let's see. I think we don't have anybody here yet. Hey, hey. All right, there's a couple of people here. Can you guys hear me? Is my sound too loud? Is it too quiet? Is it bad? I'm trying out a different microphone today. Let's turn on the lights. Boom. All right, that's a little better. Okay, we're about to get started. Everybody come on in here. RC Ritter's here, Evil Genius, RC Addict. How's it going? Uh, let's see. I think I saw Miss Aviation up here earlier. Welcome, welcome. We're going to get started. Okay, all right. Sound is good. We've got the lights on. Is it too hot? Let's see. Is that better? We can... Adjust these lights. Whoa. Okay, that's too bright. Bring it back down. That's not too bad. Okay. Let's see. Where is everyone at? How are you guys doing this? Is it Thursday? It's hard to remember what day of the week it is these days. Um, not enough days in the week to get all the packs in that you want to be able to fly. Uh, but really interesting times. Um, Jab Skyward, how's it going? Uh, I've had quite a few people try this new DJI drone, and so it kind of got me reminiscing about what my first quadcopter experience was and compare and contrast what it's like for people starting today compared to what we started with. So... Let's start by some people saying, what was your first quad, the year and the model that you got? What year did you start off with? Um, and what was it that you started off with? Was it a toy grade? Was it a DJI? Was it a full blown acro quadcopter? And when was it? For me, the thing that I started off with was a SEMA X5C1, just like this one right here. And uh, it's like a $50 quadcopter on Amazon. And I really learned how to fly, how to work the sticks, how to get that fine throttle adjustment. I must have flown this thing about 40 hours. And the, the thing was, when I bought this, my goal wasn't to fly a toy grade. My goal was I wanted to buy a DJI Phantom. Now, this was back in 2016, about five years ago, uh, when I got my first drone. And I wanted to get a DJI Phantom because they looked incredible. And I just thought it was so awesome. But the price for a toy was quite steep. You got to remember five years ago, this was still in the years of the Xbox One. And a Phantom cost, what, $500 or something like that for the, low, the lower one. And $500, I mean, that was more than an Xbox One, more than a PlayStation 4. And so I did not want to risk crashing it. So my goal was to buy something toy grade because the controls were essentially the same. Learn how to fly it, learn how to fly it in wind, learn how to fly it um, under stress, learn how to avoid crashing it on something like this, and then get that expensive camera drone. And I was quite surprised at how much fun this thing actually was. Um, the SEMA X5C, uh, Nick Wicked Stick said he started with a Parrot uh, Jab Skyward started with 3D printed parts from Banggood a year and a half ago. RC Ridded started with the Hubson X4 and the H107C. Yes, cheap ones. Nick also had the Bebop 2. Okay, that's the one that he had. 
And so, you know, a lot of us have started off on this toy grade side. Now, a lot of other people started maybe in the DJI camera drone space. You may have started with a Mavic Mini or a DJI Phantom, uh, and that's fine too. Uh, Joseph Dahari, what's going on? SST FPV started with a five inch Eris ready to fly in spring of 2018. Uh, Evil Genius started with the Mobula 6 and they went to the Roma. What? A transition uh, from those two crafts. Great, great uh, selection there, um, Evil Genius. Now, today though, 2019, or no, it's not 2019, today, 2021, when we're recommending what new people should get, should we still say start with a toy grade? Should we still say start with a tiny whoop? Should we still say start with something if their goals are ultimately to get footage? Um, there's still quite a bit of learning curve. There was still a learning curve with this. This thing is so tough though that it's almost indestructible. Like you could fly it up a hundred feet, let it fall, and it would just smack on the ground and it would not even be broken. I don't know how this $50 craft is so robust. Um, but it was still difficult, right? The reason why it was nice, it was robust because you would crash it. And in 2021, is this the easier way to get people up in the air? Chris Miller says that his first was an F450 with a KK2 board six years ago. Chris, you started the year before I did. That 450 size is monstrous. It's almost as big as what we would consider X class today, maybe beast class, quite large. Um, RC Ritter had a black and red burnt out uh, brush motor after two weeks. Oh, Brandon says he started with the toy grade micros and whoops all day long. FPV Girl says that she started with a Costco drone that looks like the one you're holding. Yes, you could get a lot of those great toy grades. A lot of them were just rebranded versions. You can get them at like uh, Walmart or Target sometimes, TJ Maxx. Um, but I've gotten three people to fly and experience the joys of FPV flight. You see, when you start flying with this, there's no FPV on board. So you're essentially flying an, a quadcopter kite, which is still incredibly fun. Being able to have anything fly at this flick of a stick is remarkably um, it's, it's just truly a unique and glorious experience, but being able to actually see from that bird's eye view via FPV is something altogether different. I've gotten three people that had zero experience. I'm going to go take another, um, old friend out tomorrow, um, to have him get his first packs on this. So what... Is it that you should be doing? What should you be recommending as an ambassador of FPV? If you're already here and people want to get started prior to the launch of this product, the suggestion was go get the Emacs um, kit, go get the beta FPV kit, go get one of these kits, go assemble your own kit, get a tiny whoop, try to learn to fly in your house, get the simulator. Um, and then the problem with those suggestions was a lot of people would lose steam, lose interest before they actually got in the air. Um, Lone Star UAV says he got started with a Mavic Air and then got the SEMA X5R to learn how to fly. RC Attic started with the Hubs and X4. Evil Genius says um, he had 25K motors. Yes, I do. Yeah, you got to keep your original quads. I didn't. That's not my original. My original SEMA X5C. Um, I one time I had a brother in law over. We were having a couple of drinks, and I was like, You got to learn how to fly a drone. Let's go outside. And about two minutes later, it was soaring uh, over the neighborhood into the woods, never to be seen again. Um, so you can let people fly this and not really worry too much about them crashing it or damaging it or losing it. Uh, MK says, if you want to fly acro, you need an indestructible acro flyer, a two to three S brushless loop. I kind of agree with you, um, but it's just so hard because the learning curve is so steep and there's some people that won't get it in that first couple of hours. And the, the race is when you get something that's an acro flyer, even small, um, this is going to be coming up on the channel very soon. This is the TP3. It is unmistakably light and powerful and floaty, and it's just a joy to fly. But could a beginner fly this 
and learn how to fly before they crash it hard enough to break its spindly arms? That is the real question that we're trying to answer here. Like, could you, could you start somebody off with this that doesn't have any experience at all? And I don't know, man, it would be really hard. There would be a race between, will they lose interest first? Will they learn to fly first or will they break it first? And two out of three of those are gonna probably send somebody out of the hobby. Um, let's see, Lone Star UAV says, somebody completely new, I would recommend the Mini 2. I do like that recommendation. If your goal is more to be able to get good footage, I would probably say that is a good way um, to spend about $400, $450, get into the hobby of flying drones, getting footage, but it doesn't give you that FPV sensation. And that's what I really think is the most compelling and addicting thing. Um, Let's see, SST says, any other route is a waste of money. <laughs> DT had a bit FEV 65S in 2019. Yes, you know, those are the folks, the people that started around 2019, 2018, uh, whenever we were already on beta flight 3.5 or so, um, they had a really an accelerated um, learning experience compared to those that started 2016 or sooner or older. Because once we got to about beta flight 3.5, things were so much more stable. They were so much more reliable. They were so much easier to get flashed, get tuned. Bardwell was already out there. Um, Project Blue Falcon was already out there. Rest in peace, Project Blue Falcon. We miss you. Um, but it's still difficult it's still tough to manage it's still hard to be able to master flying um any kind of drone even in auto level mode even a whoop indoors you remember the first time you tried to fly a whoop in your house how many times you crashed how many times you banged into the wall and your wife is screaming in the background saying what are you doing to the house Go take it outside, but you're scared to take it outside because what if you lose control out there? It'll just go sailing into the neighbor's pool, and then what do you do? Then what do you do? I don't know. MK says the first drone that made, he made a drone out of a wood dowel with a Gall FC from over 10 years ago. Yeah, my buddy uh, Neil NM Grower, you see him in the race vlogs. He is the FPV Mr. Miyagi. He's been flying for about um, almost that long. He had a quadcopter made of wood. Uh, also quite interesting. Uh, Chris Miller says clean flight was a mess. Flashing ESCs back then sucked. Yes, I agree. It was so much more difficult. So beta flight has gotten easier. BL Heli has gotten easier. The quality of tutorials and learning materials out there has gotten significantly better, but it's still hard. And the other thing that I argue in some of my reviews and some of my other videos is that in order to really get into FPV, you have to have the type of personality that will keep trying and trying and trying until you get it. That's why IT, that's why FPV is um, primarily compromised of IT people, of artists, of skateboarders, of mechanics. And those are all the people that will just keep trying and trying and trying. But for the most part, we're already here. We're already in the hobby. So how do we grow the hobby beyond these individuals that are already here? How do we get your buddy, your brother, your sister, your kids involved in FPV if they could potentially be good pilots, if they could potentially enjoy flying, if they could potentially enjoy going out to the field, ripping packs with you, but there's no way they're going to make it over that learning curve. And I think that's why this DJI FPV drone is so groundbreaking. You know, like I don't even think it's very fun to fly personally for myself, but just having it around to be able to let people fly, you know, I'll have four completely new people that I've had um, friends. A couple of these guys have been friends since I've been friends with since like the first grade, right? We've never been able to go fly drones together. My buddies, my homies. Uh, and now we can. Now, this is an expensive toy just to keep around in order to let other people fly. So I don't know if I'll be keeping it long term, but I just, I wish if I had, if I, if this channel had a larger budget, 
Um, if money was no object, I would absolutely keep this thing around because it's just such a great tool for teaching people, for getting people to show um, them what it's like. That flying sensation. You remember the first time you took an FBV flight? It was probably years ago on an analog camera. The image was blurry. It was, it was staticky. You could barely see anything, but my goodness. How mind blowing was that sensation and the ability to give it to somebody today, have them fly this and see like the image is actually great. Um, it's even better than the current DJI FPV Canix V Store air unit. So it's really quite compelling to get people started with this tool. Um, let's see. RC Attic says he had an MJX 103W. It was his second drone. SST says my buddies all say they don't have the money. Um, okay, like I do, you know, FPV isn't free, but it's definitely a reasonably priced hobby, I would have to say, at least compared to the other hobbies I've had. Anytime I was like going to the track, messing with my car, that was way more expensive than FPV. Anytime I was like, you know, getting into video shooting, um, you know, a new lens would cost as much or more than the total DJI FPV drone kit. So like there's a lot more expensive hobbies out there. I love that FPV is a hobby where, um, you know, before I'd be excited for like a 2000 or a $3,000 camera. Now I can be excited for like a $50 camera. You know, it, isn't that crazy? Um, and so that's, what's really cool about it. Bubba, what's going on, man? Good to hear from you. Um, SST says, I think the DJI FPV experience is too different from our purpose built machines. It is. And that's why I think it's a gateway. It's an entry point. It's a pay to unlock. You pay to unlock that level of, um, of experience in order to get your first FPV experience. And I think ultimately it's going to drive consumers to different paths. Um, people are going to say, I want better footage. This footage is okay, but I want better footage. I'm going to go get the Mavic 2 Pro. I don't really care about doing flip de flopties and loop de loops right? Or people are going to say, you know, I've gotten really cool um, images of my whole neighborhood now, but what else do I do with this thing? I want to go do tricks. I want to go do freestyle. I want to go to my first race. And for those people, they're going to go over to traditional FPV and start getting interested in what we do. And the nice thing about that DJI FPV combo is you're already going to have the DJI goggles to go down that route. No, I do really not like that the remote, which is actually better than I thought it was going to be, is not compatible with any of the air units or Vistas right now. So that's kind of a lame thing. So you do waste a little bit of money there. That is a bummer. Um, DT says, I traded my FPS habit for FPV. Yes. Now, DT, would you say in a year's time, did you spend more money on FPS games, on keeping your graphics card up to date, on keeping your gaming rig up to date and your monitor and all that stuff per year, or would you spend more on FPV? Let me know in the comments there. Hydrone69 says, what's up? Chris Miller says that try to buy quad parts a little at a time that's what i do that's what i do also chris um rc word is not too big a fan of the gimbals but the rest is nice i agree you know for us and i said it in my review um for anybody that already can fly a five inch acro drone with a hero and feel confident and get good footage um getting the dji pv drone is actually going to be a step down for you you're already up here the DJI FPV drone is here. What it's meant to do is take people from the ground level with zero experience all the way up to here and get that first FPV flight. And they'll graduate to a higher level, which was the FPV acro that we do with a carbon fiber frame that can actually take a hit. Now, it's tough though. That learning curve is tough. And we always forget how hard it was for us to get going. You know, there was somebody in one of the Facebook groups uh, last week that I saw saying, hey guys, I've spent two hours on this DJI simulator in manual mode and I'm not getting the hang of it. Like, is this thing even worth it? Like learning 
acro, learning to fly is so much more difficult than that. You can't expect to learn in a couple hours. Replace that sentence with, hey guys, I just spent two hours driving for the first time with my mom and her Camry, and I'm not getting the hang of it. That doesn't sound like that sounds ridiculous. How long did it take you driving with a parent or an uncle or a brother until you had the experience necessary to go on the freeway by yourself? Now multiply that by two or three times. That's how difficult it is to learn to, F to fly FPV. You see this right here? This was me trying to learn how to ride my nephew's hoverboard. My nephew let me try out his hoverboard a couple of days ago and it was going good. I, you know, I was like making little circles. I went up and down the street a few times, started getting a little more confident. I went to the neighbor's driveway. It was a little bit of a slant. I turned too quick and it just flew out from under me. Boom, road rash going three miles an hour on a hoverboard. And you see, that's the kind of experience people are going to have when they try to get into FPV acro manual mode too quickly. They're going to crash and they're going to burn. Um, thankfully, I didn't break a hip, guys, but that's just the way it is. Okay. DT says it's almost equal, but FPV is slightly cheaper. That's kind of what I would have thought. So thanks for verifying that for us, DT. Brandon says on the high end, a gaming, uh, a fully high end gaming setup is a lot more than FPV. That's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, today's prices, MK says that you can get two DJI FPV combos for the price of one video card. Yeah, no kidding. Thanks to all of the crypto miners. Thanks, crypto miners scalping all the dang video cars goodness um let's see jab says he spent way more on his pc sst spent that in the past three years he spent on what a killer gaming pc could have cost so that's not too bad three years of fpv or one pretty sweet gaming rig but FPV is the gift that comes on giving. FPV is the gift that gets you out of the house into the wilderness. Um, I'm about 20 shades darker <laughs> than I normally would be. Why? Thanks to FPV, because prior to that, I would almost never go outside, even before this pandemic. Who wants to be outside? But then once you experience the miracle of flight, then you always want to be outside. Uh, let's see. Let's get on to... We had some other topics prepared so yes so what should be the 2021 first quad recommendation what should it be guys should it be the dji fpv drone because while i think that it's the easiest way to experience your first flight and the reason why i like that so much is because i always recommend when people get starting getting started don't build your first quad don't build it build like your third quad you want to buy something that you can get up in the air and experience because you want to experience how fun it is to fly then when you're on the bench for hours and hours when you're stuck in the you know labyrinth of beta flight menus when you're stuck trying to get that stupid fr sky receiver updated to this radio that's not even compatible again with it you know what you're shooting for. You know that work is going towards you flying. You know how fantastic that is. So that drives you to keep working and working and working. That's why I don't ever recommend someone build their first drone. I think that they should build their third drone. The first two, you should be able to get in the air and learn how addictive that flight is. You know, just like Street pharmacists would tell you the first one's free. Well, how much do you think you're going to get people to fork over their 401k to you if they haven't even tried it? You got to give them a taste of that FPV. So should they start with a tiny whoop now that it's 2021? Now, granted, not everyone is going to have the budget to dive in at $1,300. I would not have had that budget. But if you do have the budget, if you're a Mavic user, I do think that is the best way to get started. Um, now, if you are going for more of a budget price, leave in the comments, guys, what do you think 
is the best way for someone to get started? And what do you think is the best price point? I've usually said about $200 seems about fair. It's half the price of a gaming system. Um, it's something that people seem to be comfortable spending. I'd say $200, $250. Uh, the other thing that's so difficult though, is that other than Emacs and Beta FPV with their sort of micros that are primarily targeted towards flying indoors, it's really hard to assemble a fully working kit. And when I say kit, I mean charger, battery, radio, goggles, quad, props, everything, because it's giving somebody a shopping list is so difficult when you say, okay, here's a drone, but go find yourself a charger, a radio, a goggle, a module, an antenna set, uh, two different chargers, one for the goggle battery, one for the lipos, it's mind blowing. And when they go to ask for advice, like in one of the Facebook groups, they're going to get 30 different answers. That's why it's so tough. Um, so Super Deluxe says, what is your stance on aliens? <laughs> well, uh, the word is still out. I'm paying close attention to any of those photographs being taken by that Mars rover that's up there right now and the quadcopter, because what do we spot when we're out there flying from high above? That's the best chance for us to find alien life. You know, they say that the Ingenuity copter is only good for five flights. I don't think that's true. They're only gonna show us the first five flights, guys. But after that, that's when they're really gonna go finding the real aliens. So let's all stay tuned to that. Bubba says, I'm really very much a noob and a freestyle guy, but every time I get in the air, I'm getting better. That is the way to get better, Bubba. Stick time, stick time, stick time. That is the secret ingredient. And when you first get started, uh, I know I was a victim of this. I was a victim of being a gear whore. And I am like that in almost every hobby. In fact, my whole life, I've just been sort of collecting hobbies. And over time, especially if you get into camera gear or cars or anything, really, you can see that your hobby starts bifurcating into two hobbies, right? You have the hobby of actually doing your hobby. And then you have the hobby of collecting the gear. And oh man, in the camera space, I would always be collecting a new dolly, a new tripod, a new steady cam, a new slider, a new jib, a new this, a new that. And the same thing is true in FPV. If you're not careful, you can spend all of your time shopping and not enough time flying. So always make it a point to get out there and fly. Don't change your setup too frequently. You need you know, flights over and over and over. You need packs on consistent stuff so that you can develop and build that muscle memory. Um, before I would get beaten at the track when I was still a noob and I would think, hmm, what kind of motors did that guy have? What kind of props did he have? That's why he beat me. No, he beat me because he had more stick time than I did. Uh, so get that stick time. You're on the right track, Bubba. Super Deluxe, the FPV army grows stronger and more powerful. Thanks for that super chat, Super Deluxe. <laughs> yes. You know what? What if we discover a secret ancient race of FPV pilots on Mars? We've sent the first FPV craft up there, so hopefully we'll be lured of all of these sentient FPV beings. Uh, I think goggles are the sticking point, says SST. That is true. Uh, DT suggests if you're new, just buy box goggles and an FR Sky Tiny Hawk Freestyle for about 500 bucks. That's that's not a bad uh, suggestion. Um, I think 500 bucks, though, is like that middle ground. I think most people are going to be comfortable spending probably under 300 or go all the way up and maybe like stay away from that middle zone. But that, if you had somebody that was curating that list for you and you could just go click it and buy it, I think that is the right track. I'll probably have to make a video about that. So that's a good suggestion, DT. Uh, Bubba, thank you for the super chat, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Thanks for all the help. Uh, anytime, I'm glad to help all you guys out. Thank you guys for coming and participating in the chat. That's what really makes these. Now let's switch gears. We've talked enough about what beginners should be flying. Let's switch gears over to action cameras. I wanted to show you guys the results of a poll that I did. Let's see if I can figure out how to do this. 
Uh, let's see. Okay, so I took a poll. Here's what I'm going to try to start doing, guys. I'm going to try to start having a poll every Saturday where you go and vote. And then the following Tuesday, now the live streams are normally going to be Tuesday at 7.30 Central Time. Uh, I didn't have time this Tuesday, so I'm doing it Thursday because I didn't want to lose momentum. But normally the live streams are going to be Tuesday, 7.30. I'm going to have a poll on the Saturday. Every Saturday is going to be a poll. Then we're going to release the poll results and we can have some discussion based on that poll. So let's pull up the poll results. The poll for this week was what action camera are you using? And let's take a look at what the results of that were. Let's see if I can figure out. I'm talking really fast because I'm trying to figure out how to do this as I am pulling it up. So let's try to share this Chrome tab. Let's see if it works. Okay, are you guys able to see that? Can you see that Chrome tab? Okay, it might be a little small, but let's do this. Okay, here are the results for the most popular action cameras that everybody are using. We had almost 300 votes this time, so good job voting, everyone. Um, we had 6% uh, using the most current GoPro, the GoPro Hero 9. I think that this is the best footage on the market as the most up-to-date version of GoPro stabilization, hyper smooth, but it's also the fattest, the chunkiest, the heaviest, and it has this not really good for FPV front screen that most of us don't really like. Now, the next category was whether you're using any of the other heroes, the six, seven, or eight. 46% of you guys voted for that. So most people are using the other heroes. Those are the ones that are still compatible with Real Steady. So you could just plug that footage in and you'll get footage that is more stable than the Hero 9. Uh, I still think that the sensor and lens combination on the Hero 9 is slightly better, but for the best stabilization, there is no substitute for even something as old as the Hero 6 and real steady. So the next one in line is the new Darling camera that I'm really loving, the Insta360 GO 2. This one got... 5% of the votes. Well, actually, it was the Insta360 Go slash 2. So it could be the 1 or the 2. Uh, only 5% of people are using that. So um, that's not too surprising. But I'm thinking that this one is going to gain steam. Now, I do have a video comparing all of these cameras together that you can be able to see side by side. So stay subscribed so you'll be able to check that out very soon. Uh, we had 17 people or 17% of people using these session cameras, the session four or five, those are fantastic. Do you know how rare those are now? You know how hard it is to get a session camera these days? It's almost impossible, guys. If you go on Amazon, the price fluctuates higher than GameStop, guys. It's to the moon. It's $650 to $800 for a session five these days. They're un obtainable. They might as well be made out of vibranium. There's no way you're getting one, guys, if you don't have one already. You know, Mr. Steel still flies his for his personal freestyle rips, but when he breaks the last of them, what's he going to do? Is he going to pay 800 for one of those, or is he going to start flying a hero all the time? Now, 26% uh, of you guys actually said DVR only. No need for an action camera. So that's really interesting that uh, almost a little bit over a quarter of the people said they're not using an action camera. Very fascinating. What action cameras are you guys using? Leave it in the comments right now. Uh, let's see. Let's catch up with some of these comments. Ratatak Tat RC Flyer says that the Tango 2 with the HDO2 and the Fusion with the Lumineer QAVS freestyle was his first and it added up to about $1,200. That is a really interesting combination and price point. Straight to the top with quality gear. Um, I really like that. And I really like how the price point is pretty comparable to that new DJI drone. Um, there are people that like to buy once. There are people that like to go straight to the best. There are people that don't want to have to put around 
with garbage rebuying goggles, rebuying chargers, and that is people like Ratatat Tat RC. So I do like that. Uh, people do say get the good goggles. Skunk Master FPV, what's going on? Super Deluxe has two session fives. I'm gonna paint them gold. Yes, that's a good idea. I'd be very curious to know per ounce whether a gold bar or a session five spray painted gold was more valuable. Those things are geez. I mean, good lord, how how high is the price on those session fives going to go? Uh, I should have hoarded them. I sold them early. Uh, unsurprisingly, I sold my session fives too early. I sold. I uh, had a pair of them. One wasn't really working too good, but the other one was working great. And I think I sold them for like 250 bucks for the pair, which was way too low. Um, the same thing happened to me with my Netflix stock, guys. I bought 11 shares of Netflix a few years ago. I sold it and made a profit of $45. $45. And I was like, I'm rich. Wolf of Wall Street, son. $45 profit in a day. You know how much profit I would have made if I would have just kept those 11 shares of Netflix? I'd be up over four G's. Why did I do it, guys? Maybe it was three G's. I can't remember. But that kind of error in math is what probably why it made me sold in the first place. Pacific Northwest Pilot says, what's up? Skunk Master uses the Cadex Orca. DT has been using the Insta360 Go. They're about $600 now on Amazon. That's right. GoPro needs to make a new one. That's why I really do appreciate all of the ways that Insta360 has listened to the FPV community and delivering us this product. They've really improved every single point that we wanted. They've given us longer recording times. They've given us higher resolutions, higher bit rate. They've given us a user replaceable lens for those crash times. I mean, what more can you ask for? Is it perfect? No. Is it as good as quality as a Hero 8 or a Hero 9? No. Is the stabilization as good as the Heroes? No. But it's about 75 to 80% as good for slightly less money, and it can fit on any craft. I don't think anybody is saying that they're going to take this Insta360 Go 2 and strap it onto their 5-inch just to save some weight. Nobody's going to do that. They're going to throw it on something like this toothpick. Now you can actually get HD footage that is very usable on something small, something light. We're all trying to get down to that 250 gram weight limit, guys. Can we even do it? Is it even possible? I can barely get down to 300 grams. I mean, it's it's just it's just ridiculous. Um, Ratat uses those session hands. Pacific Northwest has diamond hands. That's right. I did not have diamond hands. I had like like Manila folder hands. I didn't hold my Netflix like I should have. For shame, guys. For shame. So let's see. Jason Smalling's waiting for that hero eight to come back. Please. Yes, I do agree. Lone Star says, why not just use the Run Cam 2 4K? You know, I really do like the Run Cam 5 4K that I have the orange one. I like that one because it fits in all of the session mounts. They become a little bit hard to find, but I'll find the link and put it in the description of this live stream video if you want to go find one. Uh, I haven't tried the Cadex Orca, but I really do like that Runcam 5. I feel like it's somewhere quality-wise between the Session 4 and the Session 5. It's not quite as good as the Session 5, but you can't find one anyway. So it's better than nothing. It's better than analog DVR, I'll tell you that. What is the Hero 8-way? The Hero, I can't remember, but I want to say the Hero 9 um, gained about 18 or 20 grams compared to the 8. So... It was a little hefty. It was a little wide on the outside. It was eating too much biscuits and gravy over there at GoPro, but they increased the sensor size, I believe. So the image quality is a tad bit better. And for a camera nerd like me, I get all weak in the knees over that camera uh, footage. I want the best footage possible. And so when the GoPro Hero 9 gained a little bit of weight, you know what I did? I just threw on bigger motors on my quad so it feels the same. I love to make a quad feel like it has 
no action camera on it, and about a 2207 or 2306 motor. So as I increase the payload with the action camera, I just increase the size of the motor so that it feels the same. So no matter what quad I'm flying, the muscle memory is the same. Stick time, guys. I don't need to mess with all those crazy filters. Yes, you can go watch the anthology of those tuning videos that some of those really good tuners do. UAV Tech is a master, but I mean, it's it's not always the most uh, entertaining set of videos, guys. So if you don't want to have to spend hours and hours on the bench tuning, just tune your thumbs. That's what I do. SST has that Run Cam 5 Orange Park flying without the Cairns is the goal. That's true. And you know what? I'm glad you brought that up, RC Rigger, because that's one of my favorite things about these ultralights is they're so quiet. I can actually get the maneuverability and the performance um, of a 5-inch. If you do build a 4-inch or a 5-inch with these 2004 motors, you can add a little action camera. The problem is you still can't quite get to 250. I can get to 300 dry pretty easily. You add this is about another 30 grams by the time you add a mount. So now we're at 330. It's on the way there. You know, it's still less than half of, of the weight of a traditional five inch. So we're making the steps in the right direction. Skunkmaster says the Orca is really good. He has a few videos on his channel. If you want to go check him out, the session is 73 more power. Yvonne is here. Yvonne is the designer of the Open Racer. You know what else happened last week, guys? Or this week, Monday? I don't even know what week it is. You know what happened Monday? Vanover came to the night spot. Alex Vanover, multi-GP, former champion, DRL ESPN, former champion, came to the night spot. The race vlog that I had a few weeks ago where I crashed and I never found my motor, he came there where we race, and I couldn't make it that day. Man, what a turnout. He was flying freestyle on the course. He was racing on the course. He was showing our fastest guys what's up. Um, Yvonne was there. He's in the chat right now. He's the designer of the new open racer frame that I'll be reviewing very soon. And he is currently ranked 10th in the world. So Yvonne in the comments is 10th on the Multi-G global leaderboards. And Vanover came. And they were all amazed at how fast Vanover was. Seeing his lines was like watching the stick movements of a maestro conducting a symphony. I can't believe I missed it for shame. What a terrible thing that was. Pacific Northwest says that he's removed the doors and battery on his using the iFlight cable. Yes, I made a video about that iFlight cable. That is awesome. Jackie Jazz, what's going on? He wanted to be there so bad. Yes, you missed Vanover. I missed Vanover. Uh, hopefully he comes back um, so we can go and make a video with him. That would have been the ultimate race vlog, and I missed out. Wah, wah. Uh, Yvonne said he was smoked by Vanover like a noob. Yeah, yeah, I would have liked to get smoked by a no Vanover. Funny story. Um, about that night that Vanover showed up, which was Monday night, just three days ago. Um, if you watch my race vlog, and at the end, I'm going head to head with Joe Mama. Uh, Joe Mama was there. And during Joe Mama's heat, where he was getting ready to race, uh, Vanover wanted to go freestyle a little bit. He wanted to just freestyle while everyone else is racing. And Joe Mama's like, hey, man, don't crash into me and he's like oh no don't worry about it i'm just gonna freestyle like over the track don't worry about it so he takes up his heavy big glow in the dark freestyle quad and on the track as joe mama's going through an obstacle all of a sudden here comes vanover's bright blue aliens warship coming straight at him going backwards through a gate He's freestyling, but he decided he couldn't resist going through a gate so he's going backwards through it and head on collision with Joe Mama, mid-airing him. So in a sense, Vanover is kind of my hero. He has exacted my revenge on Joe Mama. So thank you for that, Vanover. Hopefully I'll be able to meet him soon. Uh, yes, you know what, Ritter? I did wonder 
you know what? If it was my honeymoon and I decided to depart to go drone racing, I might already be getting divorced. <laughs> but hey, I you know we don't ask those types of questions. Uh, imagine racing Evan. Yes, you know in the chat we saw Kevin Turner that night. We saw um, Chief. We saw a lot of big names in racing, and now everybody wants to come down to the H Town night spot and try their hand. So if you are ever in the Houston area, contact one of these guys, come out, show up, hang out, race with us, get on the track. We have plenty of first time pilots. It's only concrete. So yes, be prepared to break every single one of your quads, but it's really good fun. <laughs> yes, Joe Bamba did deserve that. So while we start to wrap up the stream, I want to give you guys a sneak peek. At the end of every stream, I'm going to give you a sneak peek at the videos that are coming up on the channel. Tomorrow morning, we have a video on the TP3 coming up. Um, was there something I missed by not reviewing one of these earlier? You know, I thought uh, as Kebab was developing this and Diatone made the Diatone 339, one of my favorite quads of all time, that this was kind of more of the same. And so I just kind of skipped over it, but I finally got my hands on one and it is not quite the same. This is a really interesting and unique formula. <laughs> Yvonne, thanks for the super chat for DJI FPV drone repairs. That will help replace the cost of that lost motor that we never found. It's still floating somewhere through the atmosphere right now. After this, next week, we're going to have a little FPV RC. Here you can see I have 3D modeled and printed out a little ho universal holder for you to be able to mount um, the DJI system on any RC car. This is the smaller version that you can use for smaller cars. And then I have a larger version that you can use for full size RC cars. You can turn any RC car that you own into a fully DJI experience. So if you have the new DJI drone and you've been flying it and you're too afraid to go into manual mode and you don't have a quad yet or you just want to be able to experience the joys of FPV without the stresses of worrying if you're going to crash, then this is the perfect solution. I'm going to release the files along with this next week when this video comes out so that you can build your own setup like this. All it requires is soldering two wires and you just need a little lipo like this. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be up on the channel very soon. We got a lot of other stuff coming up. Guys, we're going to be checking out the, what is this thing? The Apex 4-inch. That's coming up very soon. Uh, let's see. Pacific Northwest, do I sell prints? I don't really sell prints. I do have a number of prints printers back there. If you bought a quad for me or you're buying a quad, I mean, everything on the channel is ultimately for sale. I don't have the budget to keep a lot of the stuff. So in order for me to buy the next round of stuff that's going to go on the channel, I got to sell the old stuff. So if you ever see anything on there, you want to buy something for me, uh, from me, just ask me. Um, I'm happy to print anything out and throw it in the box. I don't really sell prints. Um, I don't know if my prints are on that high of a quality, although they have gotten a lot better now that I have a couple of Prusas. Uh, but just, you know, ping me, you know, maybe we can work something out. But um, I also have a couple of analog goodies coming up. Um, you thought analog was gone. No, it's not. This Rush Super VTX, I forgot what it's called. That thing is coming up. The Solo. I like how they copied like Han Solo font for this thing. That's pretty cool. That's coming out. I'm going to check out one of these Lion batteries very soon. Um, also, we're going to have a full 6S battery roundup for 2021. Last time we did one of those was a couple of years ago. So now it's time to benchmark the budget packs, the best packs, all of that stuff going on. Skunk Master says, we're thinking of planning of making the Nano Long Range. I am. I actually have components ready to go. Hold on one second. So see this, these are the little battery holder things. I actually have a couple that I bought and uh, 
This is what goes on top of the Nano Long Range in order to hold an 18650. Now, I was thinking though, do I really want to do this and make a 1S build? Uh, that's going to be, you know, it'll be really cool. Uh, or should I just make a 2S version, print out the frame and put in a 2S LiPo? Because I got a million 2S LiPos. Does anybody really care if it's with an 18650? Or would a LiPo be just as good? A LiPo is easy to charge. The reason for that is there's not a lot of 1S boards out there. Um, so in order to power the, uh, the whole quad off of one S of a single 18650 battery, you got to get like a step up regulator and a back and a couple other little things that solder in and the lazy builder in me is just wondering, is it even worth it? Since I already have a plethora of two S batteries just lying around, uh, Jackie jazz. Yes. My arm is jacked up. This is road rash from trying my nephew Gabe's hoverboard three days ago he let me try it i made it up and down the street a couple of times i thought i was doing pretty good it reminded me of whenever i was a kid and i asked for that teenage mutant ninja turtle skateboard and i had you know just dreams of going like doing all these skateboard tricks but i'd never quite learned how to ride well as i was going up and down the street and that hoverboard i was like oh man i'm basically like mexican tony hawk already and next thing I know, I took a turn a little bit too hard and it just flew out from under me. So uh, I think my hoverboard career may be over. Um, RC Ritter says two 18650s would make more sense. That would be cool. I wonder if I could find motors that could hold two 18650s, maybe put one on top and bottom. Then I wouldn't have to worry about all those extra step up regulators. I could just run it on 2S. That would be cool. Uh, build the Nano with the 1860, review it, and I'll buy it from you. I want one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I wish if, if I could find one of those toothpick boards that could just run off of 1S, I would for sure do it. Uh, but, man, I, I tried to order the, the step-up regulator, but it was going to take a while. Uh, Derek Dvorak, remember, you're not all that young anymore. I know. I know. I, I wasn't going to get on it, but I just kept seeing that hoverboard sit in the corner, and I was like... Golly, I want to ride it so badly. And judgment just went out the window, got the better of me. And I was like, you know what? I got this nephew. I'm a drone pilot, all right? I know how to navigate things. Get out the way. Clearly, the, the, the thumbstick skills do not translate whatsoever. Super deluxe. Thanks for the super chat, man. Turtle power. <laughs> Yes, I see. If I would have if I would have yelled at Kawabunga, I probably would not have crashed. Um, I'd buy the 2S version side by side. Yeah, you know, let me see what I can come up with. Uh, HGLRC makes them order direct from them. Yeah, you know, I'll probably ping them and just say like, "Hey, do you want to send me one?" I mean, they did send me the recon, the whole build, so. Uh, but that was at the behest of Dave C. Dave C kind of hooked me up there since I helped him uh, design the prototype. He was nice enough to get me on the reviewer list for the recon release. Uh, what camera are you using? Are you talking about what camera for the stream, Jackie Jazz? I am using the Sony A7 III. I have that going directly into my computer with a little uh, camera video adapter thingy. Then I have the Rode. Uh, wireless go um, transmitter system right here one side's on the camera the other side's right here and I have that feeding a little wireless lavalier mic right here on my lapel which turtle best represents uh, who you are super deluxe ass you know um, I, you know, as a kid, I was a member, I was a founding member of what we had in our school in fourth grade. Me, my buddy Ned, uh, a friend of ours, Dana, we formed the Ninja Turtles Drawing Club. And we would draw Ninja Turtles at school every day. Uh, and my favorite turtle to draw was Leonardo. I love playing with swords. I had a Leonardo poster on my wall and I had more you know i still to this day wear blue more than any other color so it would have to be leonardo 
Uh, although I did like all the Turtles. I loved all of those original Ninja Turtles video games. Maybe I should start doing video game reviews. Did anyone have the Nintendo Entertainment System like way back? I'm probably dating my age now, but did anybody have the original NES version of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game where there was like no continues, there was no extra lives. You basically could play as all four turtles. Like as soon as one turtle died, that turtle was gone and you only had the three left. Uh, and so you had those four lives to try to get all the way to the end and you could make it to the shredder in a few hours, but the shredder was basically impossible. I think the shredder was probably more difficult to beat than Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson's punch out. That's how bad the shredder was. He was super hard. Scott Mash says, I'm trying to think about getting my hands on the recon. I love the Flywheel Explorer. The recon is great, man. Um, when I first checked out that Dave C, uh, the prototype that he made was called the Mini Long Range. Uh, I reviewed one on the channel and then I got to do the recon. It's so fun. Like I really love the five inch of those ultralights a little bit more than the four inch. If your main goal is long range and massive flight time, you wanna go with the four inch, but to me, it feels a little bit underpowered. You're not gonna get as good of flight times on the five inch, but you can still get really respectable flight times, but it has just a little bit more juice, a little bit more punch. And to me, it's a little bit more capable of carrying a small action camera like one of these Insta360s or a naked GoPro. Adam is in the chat trolling. What is this? Let me kick this guy. This guy's going in timeout. Joel says, what is a good freestyle HD frame? Joel, I'm going to be making a video very soon on the top five freestyle DJI frames, but here they are, spoiler alert, in any, in no particular order. The Apex, the Bangod slash Shocker Tank from Catalyst Machine Works, from Armitan, the Badger slash Marmot, from FPV Cycle, the Glide, and last but not least is the Source One. The Source One is a budget frame that is still very respectable. If you get the Source One version four, it has plenty of room for your HD flavor at the back, or if you want more of a tank, like a little sturdier version, get the V3. Um, those are my top five. I'm gonna be giving you a lot more detail on how that is gonna go. So stay tuned for that. Uh, DT rented Battletoads and I wished I'd buy it. <laughs> yes, Battletoads was also very difficult. Uh, <laughs> Adam is banned. Yes, yeah, Super Deluxe, next time I'll have to make you mod. Thanks, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, Driftaholic says he's been flying DJI for your drone at 8,500 feet. It wobbles bad on low throttle drops. <laughs> is this for real? I think that's a little bit higher than 400 feet. Are, are you saying 8,500 feet away? Because wouldn't 8,500 feet like be to the atmosphere? I don't know. That seems pretty high. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yes, they did redo a redo of Battletoads. I need to check that out. They also did a redo of one of my favorite original games, which was DuckTales. Did anybody ever play that DuckTales game or, or used to watch the cartoon? I mean, oh, man, I used to love DuckTales because they had that one Gizmo Duck character that was sort of like Iron Man, and there was no, like, Marvel cartoons on at that time period, like in the early, early 90s. And so, like... Um, Gizmo Duck would like say this magic words and the suit would fly on him and, and come on just like Iron Man. And like he was like a duck version of it was sort of like Iron Man slash Robocop. It was pretty cool. Uh, so I think I'm going to go ahead and close it out there, guys. Thanks for coming on board. Remember, the normal stream time is going to go back to Tuesday next week. It's, we're going to be doing Tuesdays at 730 p.m. Central Time. The polls are going to go up on Saturday, so I'm going to put a poll up Saturday. Vote in the poll. We'll review the poll results 
Here, we had almost 300 people vote on the action camera poll this week. Uh, I'll release the poll topic on Saturday, so go vote if you want to come back and discuss the, the results. Thanks, everyone who left the super chat. Danny R is the bean counter. Yes. DT might know the lyrics of the DuckTales theory. Of course, I know I do. If I had the means, I would be building my own money bin. So if I get to 100,000 subscribers, money bin, guys, it's going to be money bin time. So please subscribe so I can build that money bin. You'll be invited to come over and swim in it too. Um, maybe. TBS said on the live stream they rename, renamed the source V4 to HD. Why can't they make up their minds? But thank you, Short Bus, for letting us know that. Have a great day. Yes. Thanks again, Super Deluxe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for participating. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Ratatat -tat and SST. We'll see you next time, guys. And thanks for coming on to the Johnny Five Show, the show where John is always right. And if you agree with him, you could be right too. Thanks, guys. <laughs>